Sir, have you ever done a project on Fountain Way? That's where she lives. Have you ever done a project on Sierra Street? No, no, not Sierra Street. Have you ever done a project on Indianapolis Street? I've done a couple, yes. So what I'm wondering but is why there are charges on her card for a project with the name Indianapolis. I mean, those would be your charges for the Indianapolis well, project. I mean, I'll, I'll work all over town, so you know. Uh, of course, but you think she's doing a project on Indianapolis Street? No, you were. Right? And that's why I think you made a mistake, right? This was a pretty clever what you did. You were charging these on her card. The problem was you were putting in the job name on it, each of the receipts I mean, that you were filling out. And that's why we have receipts that say job name, Indianapolis, job name, Fountain Way. Does your mother live on Fountain Way? Yes, she does. It does sound like you were doing a good job of adding in which project it was for, for your own accounting purposes. The problem is I think that evidence here today is what's gonna sink you. I think I'm good. Well, I feel like I earned my detective badge on this one. <laughs> you, did. you did. Unfortunately for the defendant, he was doing too good a job noting his fraud in the notes section of the receipts <laughs> by putting the name of the job that he was completing. I've taken a look at all the receipts provided by the plaintiff, and to the extent we don't have every single receipt, the credibility determination here is obvious. He lied through his teeth about obvious. purchasing anything else. So I think they agree that about $200 of the charges were definitely made by the plaintiff yes. for her mother's remodel. And I was able to find one other receipt in the amount of $326 where the job name was listed as Fountain Way, which is the street that her mother lives on. And to the extent that any of the other purchases were unclear, I think the defendant, because of his lack of credibility, I would stick him with all of them. The was she present for that, for that second purchase? For I don't I don't believe she was. I just have an, look, I just have an issue, because I'm with you all, but I just have an issue with, even though he purchased the materials for her mother's renovation, did he actually use the materials? We know he didn't finish the renovation. He could have kept those materials. That's why I asked, was she present? No, she wasn't present. I, I wouldn't hold her to that standard. I think yeah. the mother was giving some minimum amount of direction, according to right. the plaintiff. And the defendant did say it rings true that a, <laughs> the one thing he said that rang true, that a renovation of this cost would be about $4,000 in just materials. You know, even if he didn't complete the project, mm -hmm. we're looking at about $500, a small pittance of the amount of the renovation. I'd be inclined to deduct both of those amounts okay. from the credit card bill. I'll go along with that. How about so would I. I. Sounds good. This courtroom is again in session. You know, I think this is a case that could be an example for all litigants of how critical bringing your evidence to court can be. Because this was a case that was easily resolved in our deliberations, not only by hearing the testimony, but by the proof and the documents that Ms. Fabella brought to court. I think they told the entire story and they made our decision for us very easy. Ms. Fabella, you are seeking approximately $2,200 for charges made on the Home Depot credit card that you say the defendant fraudulently charged. You can see that about 200 of those dollars were spent on that first day towards your mother's home renovation. And in going through the receipts that you brought, we found approximately $300 of additional charges that the defendant indicated were for the Fountain Way project which is the street your mother lives on. So because the defendant was clearly not careful about putting the names of his other projects on the receipts for your credit card, we believe that that $300 did go towards your mother's project. We don't believe that anything else that the defendant purchased went towards your mother's project, and we believe that he somehow got access to your credit card and made those purchases on an unauthorized basis, and therefore you are entitled to recover for those purchases. So Ms. Fabella, the verdict of the court, which was unanimous, is for the total amount of $1,700 in your favor from the defendant. And that is the verdict of the court today.